and you are all up. This week on Burnt Wolf Airsoft, I'm going to be taking a look at airsoft propellants and their pros and cons. Now, let's start out with the most common, the AEG. AEGs, as we all know, run off batteries. They're affordable and reliable and can be used all year round without having to stop for the cold. Most of the cons with this type of power source come from using the wrong type of battery in the gun, with low volts causing improper cycling and high volts burning out the contacts. The only drawback to using this type of airsoft gun is the pre-planning. Batteries can take a long time to charge, so this needs to be done before a game. And unless you're particularly diligent with your charging, you can't just decide to go play airsoft on the spur of the moment one Sunday morning. Now let's take a look at the HBAs. HBAs run off a high pressure air tank. They're great guns for range and accuracy and often outrange their AEG counterparts. They're very consistent to shoot and like the AEG's batteries, the pressurized scuba tanks are not too bothered by the cold, meaning they can be used all year round. HPAs are generally the most expensive type of airsoft gun going though, as you can't fudge on parts using extreme high pressure, although I'm sure there's a manufacturer out there that's tried. The main drawback to this type of airsoft gun is the tank. Now don't get me wrong, I know it's not on all HPA systems, there are some streamlined versions out there, but most HPA systems run off a scuba tank like those used to power paintball markers. This tank can be a sod to carry around. Most people set this type of gun up off a gas line to take the weight and bulk of the tank off the gun. However, this line in itself can be rather annoying and from my own personal experience using one of these is great for getting snagged on things. The other drawback to HPA is, like their AEG counterparts, they often require pre-planning before use as not all sites have the means to top up HPAs. And if you run out of gas on a site without HPA facilities, well, you best have bought a backup. Now, let's take a look at the gas guns. Firstly, green gas. Green gas is simply propane gas mixed with something to take the smell off and silicon to help keep everything moving. The other type of gas used in airsoft guns is CO2, in which a small bulb tank filled with carbon dioxide is used to power the gun. Both are normally found on gas blowback systems and give a nice bit of recoil and sound without the added incumbent of a full-size tank. Of course, lacking the full-size tank, their gas will need to be topped up and changed throughout the day, but this can easily be done as and when required. They're about as accurate as any other airsoft gun really, but they're only really for the summer months. As in colder temperatures, both types lose FPS, and in the extreme cold, green gas guns will often gas out, and the CO2 types will have a very limited number of shots. However, for the warmer months or indoor games, they're great little guns, and as long as you have the CO2 and green gas to hand, are pick up and play. Now lastly, let's take a look at a personal favourite of mine, the Springer. Springers are often found powering sniper rifles and shotguns. These can be fired as much as you like. They shoot for as long as you can keep pulling the bolt back and are the true kings of pick up and play. I always carry one of these in my bag as a backup. The main drawback to Springers is their low rate of fire and some, especially the more powerful ones, can be rather hard to cock back and will take their toll on a user over the course of a day. And that's a quick look at the pros and cons of airsoft propellant types. What's your favorite propellant type and why? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more airsoft tips, tricks, reviews and how-tos. Anyway, back to whatever you were doing. Addies.